Testing is what separates average versus a six, seven, eight figure dropshipper. Your average dropshippers test one thing and then pretty much gives up. Successful dropshippers know the importance of testing and utilize it correctly. Whether it's testing interests, LLAs, testing different creatives, marketing angles, landing page structure, or the actual product. In order to succeed, you must test a lot. The more products that you actually test, the higher your chance of success is gonna be because not every single product you test is gonna be a winner. So in this video, we'll be testing five products within 24 hours via Facebook ads and also evaluating their performance and also troubleshooting the funnel so that you guys can also understand what you should do if you were in my scenario. I've seen Jay Rich do a similar video like this in the past where he tested five different stores all via Instagram pages, niche pages, meme pages, influencers, I'm not entirely sure, and saw a quite decent success. And so he built five different stores all within 24 hours and launched them through Instagram. So great to, to him for this particular video idea inspiration but we're doing it with a little bit of a different spin and this time with Facebook ads as I do believe you guys can learn a lot more from that now in this video for once I'm not gonna be showing you guys the actual products the actual site and the ads that I'm running because I am intending on scaling one or even more products if they do go well for this Q4 so hopefully you guys understand that but I can tell you this that these five products are all from within one single niche where you could at least place them within one single niche that's all i can give you and they're all one one single pixel on one single store and as i already mentioned we got five total products but we do have to clarify a few things before actually starting to test so if you guys have seen my previous facebook ads video must watch if you haven't seen it yet very very valuable video one of the topics that i covered is the importance of your break-even point and that you have to have to know it in order to scale and also cut your ads successfully and giving them enough data to actually be able to interpret it, your ads correctly. So for each individual product that I'm testing, it is gonna be important to know the break-even point and also the break-even ROAS. So for product one, this is a little bit more of a higher ticket product. We have a selling price of $80, a break-even cost per purchase of $45, and a break-even ROAS of 1.72. Product two is even more expensive. It is actually $120 with a break-even cost per purchase of $71, and a break-even ROAS of 1.68. So what this basically means, we can spend up to $71 to obtain a purchase without losing money or gaining money. Product three and four are quite similar. They're definitely on the cheaper side, both coming in at $30. Keep in mind that this is my selling price, not the product price. The break-even cost per purchase for product three is $19.10 and the break-even row is of 1.57. Product four is slightly cheaper, but not much. We have a break-even cost per purchase of $90.90 and also a break-even row is of 1.51. And last but not least, product five is a lot more expensive than the previous ones, or not a lot. It's similar to product number two. It comes in at a selling price of $150. It costs me roughly $80, not gonna tell you the exact numbers so you guys don't steal the exact product, but that's just a rough estimate so you guys can figure it out. And we have a break-even cost per purchase of $67.50 and a break-even ROAS of 2.22, which is actually all right because we are selling higher ticket products with higher ticket price products we have better profit margins than actual dollars and therefore we can get away with a rough 2x selling price instead of roughly the 2.5 to 3x that it would look more for products under 50 60 dollars so we'll be spending a total of 250 dollars on a day one so that means we have five products five interests each with ten dollars per day in budget so i'm not expecting any major profits not thousands of dollars on sales on day one as in jay rich's video but i just want to show you guys from a transparent perspective that this is how these ads are going to perform and you guys get a better understanding of what i would do with troubleshooting this exact performance. And to be honest, I'll be happy with any sales. Right now, we're just trying to figure out if there is a market for this particular product, if people are actually interested in it, and also how our actual creative performs. If it's good, if it's bad, if it needs work, or if it's already good to go. And keep in mind, products one, two, and five are more higher ticket products and looking at them after just one day of testing really doesn't make sense as our break-even cost per purchase is anywhere between 50 and 70 dollars for these with a 10 dollar per day budget we'd have to give the ads at least five to seven days before actually giving them a proper shot and evaluating them whether they've performed well or not so after the 24 hour period keep in mind the 24 hour challenge type thing is only for the video purpose now it's just seems a lot more interesting for viewers to actually click on this video and if you're watching this you're one of them you fell for the trick well it's not really a trick but people are just more likely to click on a video if it has 24 hours within it but we do not want to only cut and evaluate the ads after 24 hours 
but I can give you guys a very, very valuable insight of what you would do in this situation. As I do believe a lot of beginners take too much of a look after the 24 hours and really get nervous, start panicking, and don't know what to do after the first day of advertising if it doesn't really go to plan or if it does go well. So that's the pure intention of this video. So after the 24 hour mark, we'll actually change up the budget to $20 per day, and then I'll keep you guys updated via the private Facebook group. By the way, it's free. So click the top link to join if you'd like. Very valuable community helping each other out to really smash it out this Q4. And I'll keep you guys updated on the actual progress of these particular ads of the individual products that do go well, or if I kill them, etc. Just give you guys some more insight on this particular store if you'd like to. Now, before I cut back to the actual ad performance after 24 hours, I just want to mention that I'm not one to overly gloat and brag about the performance. I only show the good sides of dropshipping. I also like showing the mistakes, the failures, even if something doesn't go well, because that's just the pure truth. That's how actually dropshipping and e-commerce and entrepreneurship is. You got to fail, learn from your mistakes. And I think sharing the failures is also very, very valuable for you guys, just to give you guys a better understanding. Okay. I'm not actually failing. I know what I'm doing. I know what to refine. I know what to test. I know that, okay, I've tried out this creative. I tried out this audience. Now I've just figured out a way that doesn't work. And now I know that I have to approach it from a different perspective because ultimately that's a big part of Facebook ads, e-commerce, dropshipping, entrepreneurship as a whole. Not every single product works. Not every single ad creative works. Not every single store works. Not every single niche works. And you just ultimately have to keep on testing, trying to figure out why it didn't work so that your performance does increase because only through consistent testing, trying out new things and keeping at your craft and constantly improving, that's how you see ultimate success via dropshipping. Huge, huge valuable point right there. Keep that in mind. And now I guess we'll cut back to after the ads are done and hopefully we've gotten some sales. Hopefully we've had some decent performance and I'll see you guys back then. So we are back, results are in. And before we take a look at the actual results of the Facebook ads, I noticed it's almost 80% of you guys aren't subscribed. I mean, <laughs> what's up with that? Your boy is delivering some fire free content for you. And so the least you could do is leave a like and subscribe. I mean, it doesn't hurt you. I'd appreciate it. And thank you guys, by the way, very much for the 10K. Hopefully we've hit it by now if the video is live. Okay, so now that we've covered that, let's hop right into the ads. Okay, so if we look at the ads on first glance, I'd agree, they're probably not the greatest of looking, not ideal results, but on one hand, CPMs are quite nice, which I'm quite happy with since this is a brand new ad account and it is October and there's a lot of competition right now. But there are a few very valuable key takeaways that are often overlooked on first glance. And that's what we'll be taking a look at right now and what you can do in this type of scenario if you see these kind of results. And ultimately, not every part of this is actually bad. I mean, I'm personally actually quite happy with a few of this because I do believe a lot of you guys can learn a lot more from these type of results, what I would do in these type of scenarios so that you can also understand, okay, I got these and these type of results. They are similar. What do I do? What's the right move right here? So therefore, I think it's going to be very, very valuable. And I'm low key happy that the results are like this. And keep in mind that the results could be entirely different, right? Right now we're looking at $250 spent, 110 roughly back. But if two of these initiate checkouts, so this is a $150 product, actually result in actual sales. And you know, if we would have been lucky, we've gotten two more purchases, that's an additional $300 with therefore 250 in, roughly 410 back. And then we're talking about an entirely different ball game. Then the results are great, but maybe it just wasn't our day. Keep that in mind. It fluctuates day by day, maybe we would have had an off day, but regardless, we'll take a look at each individual product and see what's the right move from here. Now let's dissect each product individually, starting off with product one. Now product one on the campaign level, we got a bunch of different important criteria to look at. We got the CPM up $9.38, which is fairly decent. A lot of you guys will have very, very high CPMs right now. If you're starting a brand new ad account, that's just completely typical. But if your CPMs are above 25, usually from my experience, it's going to be very, very tricky to actually make it profitable. So a few things that you could do in this scenario is just try a new ad account, keep on improving your ad creatives and just make sure that Facebook sees you as a legitimate business by either having positive engagement with your Facebook page, keep on paying consistently. And then Facebook knows, okay, you're a legitimate business. You actually can pay 
for the ads that you're running. Therefore, Facebook will reward you for these type of things. Keep in mind, Facebook is an auction based system and platform, and you're competing with other advertisers for this particular audience. So let's say you have a beauty product and you want to target US only and you want to go with cosmetics. There's a high chance you're going to have high CPMs if you're a brand new brand coming into this space because there's a lot, a lot of competition for this particular type of audience. So keep that in mind. So with that already mentioned, I'm quite happy with the CPMs we got. Looking at the creative performance on the campaign level, 0.87 unique CTR link click isn't ideal. Anywhere between 0.7 to 2.2 is something that you should expect. Everything above that is quite good in my opinion. Everything below that isn't really good. You should definitely look into improving your creatives. And we got two cases right here, which we definitely need to improve. We got one add to cart. We got one check out initiate. We got one purchase, which is decent. Uh, and if we take a look at the actual ad set level, it's a whole different ballgame. We got interest two and five, which have a terrible creative performance. If you see these kind of results, even on day one, usually I'm the first one to say, don't look at your ads on just day one, especially if they're a higher ticket product. But here you can clearly see after already spending $10, there's not much interest for this particular product with this particular ad for this particular audience. So 0 0.32, 0.42, those are clear indicators, something's not right. Now that could be either your product, the audience, or your ad creative. Chances are, in this case, it's probably the ad creative that just doesn't resemble well to this particular audience. But if we look at interest four and interest three, and also interest one, they're okay. We're around 1% mark. There's still a lot of room for creative improvement. That's something that we should really strive for. Now this could come in form of a scroll stopper improvement, changing up the entire video ad, or changing up the ad copy. Those kind of minor changes could actually double our performance, therefore leading for double the amount of traffic to our actual site, and hopefully a lot more sales. So what do we do for product one? We let it run for a few more days, as it is a more higher ticket product. Keep in mind, we are selling it for $80, and therefore we have a little bit of a bigger break even margin point so that we can spend a lot more money to acquire a customer. And I mean, interest three was quite profitable with an 8.25 ROAS, but interest two and five probably have to go. Not a lot of potential there. Looking at product two, a similar scenario, also a higher ticket product, $10.52, we are selling this product for $120. So keep in mind the break even points that we mentioned earlier, before we actually got into it. Now here, the creative performance is slightly better with 1.32 and 1.26 unique CTR. We also got decent CPMs, one add to cart and one initiate checkout. Sadly, no purchases, but it is a little bit more expensive than the prior product. And again, if we take a look at the ad set level, we got a similar yet different scenario here. I'd say the creative is slightly better than the previous one, but interest five is clearly not interested. We're paying $5 for one person to visit our site and that just simply is a no-go. From my experiences, if your CPC is higher than $1.40, you're gonna struggle to make it profitable, but keep in mind these are just estimation figures for you to get a better understanding and it does vary from product to product and niche to niche. But with a unique CTR of 0.24%, it's gonna be hard. So we're gonna remove that one for sure. But there's a lot of interest for interest four. So that's pretty cool. But with product two, we have to let it run for a few more days to give it a better shot of improving performance and that we can evaluate it a lot more accurately. For product three, if we dive into ads at level directly, we got one sale, which was quite nice. And interest four actually resulted in two add to cards, one initiate checkout and one purchase. That's great, obviously. Here we have a 3.15 ROAS on this particular interest. We'll definitely keep an eye out for this one, but our creatives just suck. With a video average playtime of one second, terrible scroll stopper, terrible creative. I know we got a sale, but that's great since there's buyer intent here, there's interest for the product that's already somewhat validated. Okay, only one purchase, but to add to cards, we can definitely interpret that there are people that are interested for it. The CPMs are fantastic. Now I am running conversion purchase events. These are not traffic events. So therefore I am surprised that the CPMs are this low, but we have to scrap this entire campaign for product three. Creative suck. It's just not worth it at this stage because we're practically burning money with <laughs> creatives of 0 0.43, 0 0.22. So we're gonna turn off this campaign and we're gonna relaunch it with better creatives for sure. I think there's still potential for this product. This the creatives suck and we need to move forward with much, much better creatives. But 
there's some potential in this one. Now with product four, we got a similar scenario. This is a $30 price product as with product three. This one probably performed the worst out of all different products. Now, not saying that this product is the worst one. I had a little bit of a feeling that this one could perform worse, but ultimately our creative or our product is definitely the one to blame for the ad performance in this scenario. Now, if your unique click-through rate is particularly low, under 1%, that could be put upon one of the following reasons. Number one, your product just isn't right, or it just isn't an interesting enough product. Number two, your ad creative suck. Or number three, it just isn't the right audience. And I somewhat believe that it could be either one of these three options, but our easiest bet would be to try out a completely new ad creative because we got terrible CTR, 0.25. I mean, I've, I haven't received these low CTRs in a while, in a minute. So, I mean, I'm here to blame. I'm here to learn that it just wasn't it. It just wasn't the one for this. And you got a bunch of different interests. These are all just not performing well. And as I already mentioned, what's the point of running a creative that has these type of CTRs? We're practically burning money. People just aren't interested. So we have to refine it, scrap it, go back to the strategy board and re-sketch up a brand new creative that hopefully performs a lot better. Now, keep in mind, usually we have to look at a broader picture, not just one day, but three, five, seven days, gives you a more accurate presentation of your ad performance. But when looking at these kind of top of funnel metrics with terrible, terrible CTR, from my experience, I haven't seen a major difference on a day-to-day -day basis, even looking at a longer basis, we just simply need to improve the creative. So therefore, scratch the campaign, restart from the creative creation process. And last but not least, we got product five. Now this was the higher ticket product, $150, $7.72 CPM. And you'll see right here, no videos, because I went with simple image creatives with this one. And surprise, surprise, this one has, in my opinion, the best performance out of all of them. 2.13 unique CTR and 1.78 unique link click through CTR. We've got a total of three added cards and two initiated checkouts, which is fairly decent in my opinion. I'm quite happy with this one. The interest very, I think interest three is the least interested in this one. You've got 1.15 unique CTR and by the looks of it, interest five and four seem to be quite interested with two added cards on interest four and unique checkouts initiated on both four and five, but I'm quite happy with uh, the click-through ratio. That means the ad creatives are interested enough. It is a fitting audience and we just haven't given it enough data because this is a lot more of an expensive product. And I do believe this one has a lot of potential to still perform well. It just hasn't received enough data. We just have to start spending more on this particular product. If, so if we rephrase it one more time, product five has potential, product one and two also have potential, maybe need a little bit of a creative retouching and also just spend a little bit more data towards it because they are all three more higher ticket products. Product three and four just had terrible performance, terrible creatives, but we're gonna relaunch them with hopefully better creatives, give it another shot because I mean, product three still got some sales and there's some buyer intent there, just the creatives weren't good enough. So those are the key takeaways that we can take from actually launching on day one. And that's pretty much it for this video. But if you guys seem to find value and enjoy this video and you are curious to see where does this store go? How did the ads continue performing? Definitely check out the free Facebook group where I'll be updating you guys on the ad performance if you'd like me to. Now, I know this video and day one of launching wasn't super flashy as every other guru would show, but in my opinion, these type of videos are a lot more valuable. And I would have killed to have this kind of a video to watch when I initially started off with dropshipping in 2017. I just wanna be a real one within this space because I think honesty is the best policy. So let me know if you enjoyed this type of video, a little bit of a different one, also a little bit of a different perspective. If you did, I'd kindly appreciate it if you could like, comment, subscribe, and also join the private Facebook group, as I already mentioned. Yeah, thank you guys for watching this one. I'll see you guys back with another one next week. Bye-bye.